welcome to this presentation on how to successfully lure a swarm of honeybees. I mean, who doesn't like freebies, right? And not to mention the exhilaration of watching your trap attract those scout bees in the final swarm. Swarming is a process whereby a group of bees split from its original colony, leave the nest, and search for and or move into a nest site. Honeybee swarms are a normal sign of a productive, strong colony. Swarms are considered colony level reproduction, which differs from individual bee reproduction, like when more bees are produced within a colony. During the swarm, about 50 to 70% of the worker bees rush out of the hive, though this percentage varies, herding the old queen out as they go. The original colony will remain at the nest site, rear a new queen, and continue as a functioning colony. Several factors might initiate a swarm, such as colony congestion, as the population is growing, there is no room to expand in the nest, dilution of queen pheromones, increased availability of nectar and pollen, lengthening day night, and queen age. It has also been shown that when a colony is overcrowded, they might swarm, and there's evidence to suggest that the number of bees in relation to the size of the hive determines swarming. Now, scout bees, bees that search for a new home site, have very specific nest preferences. According to Dr. Thomas Seeley, those are nest size preference of 40 liters, and sometimes acceptable between 10 to 100 liters. Nest location, 21 feet off the ground, but sometimes they might choose lower or higher, and an entrance diameter of two to five inches. The nest is also preferred to be enclosed so that they can better thermoregulate and defend. Now that I've explained to you the basic reasonings behind the swarming behavior of honeybees, I will show you some of the equipment that you can use as a lure. As mentioned, the preferred nest size is about 40 liters, but that's not to say again you can't lure them with other nest container sizes. A typical Langstroth hive, as here, holds about 10 frames and is about 40 liters. And a new hive, as here, holds about five frames, is roughly 20 liters. Make sure also not to use a screen bottom board as a draft might deter the swarm. I also have this flower pot like trap that can be purchased from most beekeeping supply stores, or you can make your own. Personally though, I like using these Langstroth hives over the flower pot method as there's no need to transfer the bees over like in the flower pot. There are also attractants that might make your trap more attractive to scout bees such as old brood comb, lemongrass, or commercially made swarm attractants. Now when using old brood comb as an attractant, you might use a frame of old built out comb or a piece of comb. I like to place only one frame into the box since the scout bees when choosing their nest size are looking for the correct amount of space. If all the frames are placed in the box, it is quite possible the bees will perceive it as having less space. That's not to say they won't swarm into it without all of them in, but in this discussion, we are talking about the preferred choices of scout bees and swarming preferences. Having a frame of old brood comb will work great, or one trick you can do is take a frame, like I have here, without foundation, and place some of the old brood comb onto it. I apply beeswax to a new paint stick and glue it into the top of the frame, as you can see here. A small amount of brood comb is attached to it. This method may be for the more advanced beekeeper, as foundationless beekeeping takes a little more management on the beekeeper's side. For the flower pot, though, I will glue a small amount of old brood comb to the upper back side, as shown here. Entrance inducers are also very important and need to be placed at the entrance as well as to reduce them to right around two to five inches. When using some sort of attractant, you can increase your odds of luring a swarm. You can buy commercially made lures that are either complex with aromatic smells or use simple lemongrass. When using any type of attractant, it's very important not to use too much. Usually one drop of lemongrass or a few squirts of the commercially made attractant is all that is required. Generally, the odorants will dissipate and need to be replied weekly. There are some attractants, though, that can be purchased that emit the odors over an extended period of time as an option as well. So now that you know the basics of why bees swarm and what type of home they're looking for, I am going to show you how to hang the flower pot swarm trap up in a tree. Now remember, a typical swarm is looking for a nest that is located about 21 feet off the ground. Now that's not to say they possibly could choose a different height as some swarms will even go into water meters at ground level. Swarm trap height variation is similar to nest box size variation as honeybees don't read books and are free to choose what they want. For safety and ease, I will hang the trap about 12 feet off the ground as I'm not one that likes heights. I'd also like to mention that I've had luck placing the traps on tops of sheds and benches. It's really fun to experiment and see where you can lure a swarm. There have even been instances where I have heard of colonies swarming to old beekeeping boxes that were stored somewhere like on the ground. So you can see, bees don't always follow the rules. Most importantly, make sure to follow your state's guidelines for swarm collection. For instance, here in the state of Florida, it is required to always requeen a swarm. This is the act of removing and killing the original queen and replacing her with a queen of known genetics. 
The reasoning behind this is that the genetics of the swarm are unknown and the possibility of spreading defensive African-derived genetics is quite high. I wish you all the best of luck in learning honeybee swarms and you get as much joy from it as I do. There is nothing better than seeing the entrance of your trap, picking up the activity of a quorum of scout bees and finally witnessing a full-on swarm. So okay, let's go hang up the trap. And remember, safety first. Okay, so here we have some examples of swarm traps that don't even follow the protocol. And uh, here we have a perfect example of just a bucket that someone did, place it up there, cost $2 as a swarm trap. And then we even have some that have been placed down at ground level and one that was even successful in learning a swarm in a nuke box.